we all could have been Superman and flew around the Earth. The one thing that won't let us and chains us down to the ground is gravity. It is the phenomenon that brings down everything that goes up. Rockets are the only man-made things that manage to escape Earth's gravity. To escape Earth's gravity, rockets have to reach the so-called escape velocity. Theoretically, the escape velocity from Earth's surface is about 11.2 km per second, but rockets don't necessarily need to travel at that speed to escape gravity. That's what you see, the slow ascent of rockets in rocket launching videos. The escape velocity is not attained at the time, but it slowly rises up towards the sky. To reach the space, rockets use a specific parabolic path, which makes use of the Earth's gravity to climb above it. It may look confusing, but it is similar to the stunt driver inside a well of death operating his motorcycle at a particular speed and angle to avoid falling. As they say, rocket science is one of the most complicated sciences. But in this video, let's navigate and understand this rocket science in the most simplified manner with common terms. Rockets have a long history before they were used in space exploration. The Chinese used rockets in fireworks from the 13th century. Later, they were modified for warfare. In the later half of the 20th century, when the Cold War was at its peak, the unannounced space race led to new inventions and rockets became the launch pad for space exploration. Newton's law of motion forms the basic principle for rocket engineering. As I said earlier, I will try to break down the engineering into simple and relatable concepts. To understand rockets working, imagine yourself holding a fully blown balloon by its neck. When you let go of the balloon, it will fly away, releasing all the air it holds inside. The escaping air produces the thrust that is required to fly. The fast escaping of air happens because the pressure of air inside the balloon is higher than that of the pressure outside. This pressure difference is the key to achieving the thrust. But balloon inflates with pressure, and so it can hold that pressure. But rocket can't be inflated. In order to hold high pressure, the wall of the tanks should be made thicker, but that will increase the mass of the rocket and result in decreasing its efficiency. That is when the engineers and the scientists came up with a solution. Rather than increasing the pressure inside the tanks, they decided to shoot the propellant into the combustion chamber with a high-powered pump. The pump is powered by a mini-engine located within the engine. A turbine is put on the path in the exhaust of the tiny engine which is connected to the pump. So when the tiny engine shoots out fuel, it makes the turbine rotate, which in turn rotates the pump. Rocket engines can be complicated to learn, and that's why it's called rocket science. But I hope that I have simplified as much as possible about the rocket engines. Done with the engine, we should know about what powers that engine. When we started using weather balloons, we found out that when we go higher and higher in the atmosphere, the oxygen level decreases. Without oxygen, combustion cannot happen, and so the rockets are powered by a propellant which is a mixture of oxidizer and fuel. They are stored in separate tanks. As we have seen in the rocket launch videos, the rocket ascends vertically up 
and at intervals it leaves some parts of it behind. This process is called stage separation. Rockets are stacked in stages so that once the fuel is burned completely in one stage, they can get rid of the tank of that stage rather than carrying an empty tank around. The path of the rocket will be predetermined in such a way that the discarded stage will fall into the ocean or a desert. But now some rocket stages are recovered and reused by landing them vertically. This is called propulsive landing or vertical takeoff, vertical landing. The main benefit of VTVL technology is seen in the potential for substantial reduction in spaceflight costs as a result of being able to use rockets after successful VTVL landings. Let's see a few examples. A single launch of Saturn V rocket cost $6.4 billion. In dollars. It was for the mission in which it put the NASA space station Skylab in orbit. It takes from 564 million to 1.64 billion in dollars for a NASA space shuttle launch where the spaceship can be reused, but the boosters and the fuel tank are not. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which uses propulsive rending to retrieve the boosters, use 50 to 62 million dollars for a single launch. Apart from losing the unwanted drag, stage separation also helps the rocket to escape the planet's gravity. That's how Cooper and Tars helped Dr. Brand to escape the gravity of the black hole in Interstellar. To illustrate some concepts further, at least once in any situation we all have come across tug of war. Let's have six people on each side of the rope. If three on the left side suddenly let go of the rope, there will be a sudden increase in power at the right side, and they pull other three across the line in an instant. The same acceleration nudge happens during the stage separation. This concept can now clarify how Cooper's sacrifice of falling into the black hole, like three people on the left side of the rope suddenly letting go, help Dr. Brand to find a planet for humanity to survive. Focusing on the stages of the rocket that progressively fall off, we missed out on the part that ultimately survives and its voyage into space. Let's rewind to it. Owing to the purpose of launching their ultimate payload into predetermined coordinates in space, and the enormous distance that this final payload has to travel, rockets are stacked in multiple stages. The last stage to be separated usually contains the payload, the astronauts, satellites, etc. The rocket stages for manned and unmanned missions are almost the same, except that the manned mission rockets are equipped with an emergency launch escape mechanism that will enable humans to escape if there is a catastrophe. The launch escape mechanism consists of an escape tower with solid boosters connected to the command module, which is the home of the astronauts in the limitless vastness of space. In the hour of an emergency, the boosters pull the common module far away from the rest of the rocket, and the common module then deploys parachutes for safe landing. You may have guessed it right, yes, it is similar to the fighter pilot ejecting out of a malfunctioning jet plane. Some of the modern rockets have modified the escape mechanism by eliminating the escape tower in their design and using the upper stage engine to break away from the rocket in an emergency. Well, we started from the bottom and now we are here. This brings us to the end of our video. 
If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and share it with your family and friends. If you're a parent, do share it with your kids. If you have any question or would like to suggest us topics to dig into in the next videos, please make use of the comment section below. Thank you!